Hello and welcome. My name's Alistair Leith and um, I'm the, going to be walking you through the use of the astrophotography tool, the APT. Um, unfortunately, I've already downloaded and installed it, and installed this, but there'll be uh, links provided for you to be able to follow through afterwards. Um, we'll just power this up. Um, while I'm powering it up, let me just quickly run through. This is for use with CC. CCD cameras and um, DSLR cameras. Um, there's going to be a bit of a bias to this too, unfortunately, because I've got a DSLR, the Canon 1000D, that I'm going to be um, using for the purposes of this. So uh, my apologies if it's that biased, but uh, there we go. Um, so anyway, we've powered up. This is the interface. What we're going to be doing in this tutorial is just very quickly giving you a quick overview of the interface and how it works so that you'll be uh, au okay fait with it when we go more deeply into the functionality of, of the software. Um, it's very capable software, this, for anybody that's been using the EOS uh, utility software. That This offers us one or two more functions that, that that doesn't. But then again, to be fair, this was written with the amateur astronomer in mind. The other software wasn't, which is why it's very dark interface that you can see here. It's been built with, it's, it's been developed with, with um, you know, dark adaption in mind so you don't get dazzled by bright screen so we've actually got it in green in, in gray here but you can also select red and uh, green as well if you want to but more on that later uh, once you've powered up you, you get the option to go in and adjust your location and from here as you can see if you click on that you you can put in your site name uh, we're based in Northampton here um, but I'm going to leave Greenwich Observatory um, that's the default it comes with but you can if it's if it's a, a you know, needs for you to do so you can put in your latitude and longitude in there which you can get from any good sat nav or from google maps you, you can get those details based on your location and, and put those in it to have the accuracy that, that you might need to require so i'm going to keep that as one more thing before i do switch off that you can also choose to have a particular folder in place there so um I've got my raw images folder on the desktop, which is easy for me to access and throw junk out of, especially when I'm filling up my hard drive. So uh, that, you know, that, that, that's all we need to see from here at the moment. What I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of go in a clockwise kind of uh, direction on here just to give you a feel for the software. Uh, I'm not going to patronise you by saying that's the date and time at the top, but it's very handy to have that there, and particularly is how this software, um, you know, to, to get the best out of it, it takes up you know the desktop so you can't see your taskbar here like you can with the EOS utility but I don't really think you need it when you're using this to be honest um, anyhow so, so that's what that is up there slightly further over um, I noticed that my camera's already been connected in but I'm going to disconnect just reconnect for the purposes of the tutorial by disconnecting you can see that the uh that the, these um, notifications aren't there so you can't see how much power's in your camera or how much space there is but you can see your laptop's down to 97 percent mine isn't hooked in at the moment and uh, it never is when i'm doing any astronomy uh, because i don't really like to take power and put a laptop out there a uh, bit bit a bit faffing around for me there which is why that's handy to know how much mileage i've got and can plan my observing accordingly. I'll connect back in now and you can see when you hover over that you get a nice little dialogues box which is handy and the software knows that I've got the EOS 1000D plumbed in there too which is handy. So there we are so, so you can see now the camera's up to 100% and you can see that there's uh, 6 gigabytes of um, space on the SD card there and the power well we've got over three and a half hours of laptop time I'd expect no less it's a new laptop so <laughs> So you can see from there um, how much space you've got and whether you need to think about recharging at any time. I know you're all thinking, what's that weird graphic down below there? Uh, well, I'm going to leave the, the cursor arrow to hover over that for now and give you a chance to read it while I quickly just summarise what it is. What that is, and it baffled me when I first saw it, I, I didn't write the software I hasten to add, I'm, I'm merely treading it through. Um, but what you can see there is that's like, like a daily... Um, uh, guide if you like as, as to how dark the sky is going to be um, so if we take a closer look you can see this is the daytime and we've got the sunset down here taking place now we're into darkness that little uh, white bar there that's invading our dark spaces as you've guessed it the moon and then of course it shows that the moon is going to be setting and then, then of course the sun will be rising and then we're into our following day there to give you better um, 
illustration of that if we double click on it and there we are you can see you've got your sunset there at 1904 and you can see a sunrise 0454 that is early but then we are in uh, April aren't we and you can see here that we've got our dark area this is what we've got dark, our deep sky darkness calculator and what this is for is if you want to do any deep sky work if you want to image any nebulae or galaxies and, and want to know you know plan ahead for that um, this is the ideal widget to, to uh, use because it tells you obviously it doesn't predict the weather but it can tell you how dark you can expect the sky to be at that time so even without you know weather forecasting in there which i think would be a bit too much it's a pretty good guideline nevertheless as, as to you know, when you can plan your works so in this case it might be good if you want to do any uh, lunar astronomy or may, may perhaps even look at the planets but if you want any deep sky then maybe not a good idea to plan that here but if we go forward we can click on next and you know, sort of you have to keep pressing it to uh, move the bar out and as you can see the lights <laughs> You can see the depressing time of the year when the um, dark sky time is getting shorter and shorter. We're now into May and if we go into June, uh, you can see the vice crunching down on the astronomy time. So you've got less and less dark sky there. And of course, obviously into the winter, that'll get bigger and bigger. So you can use this calculator to plan the astronomy you're doing. And down here, if you want to find a number of hours that you might need, you can sort of say, well, I need seven hours of dark skies. You know, how many are there and find that. And that'll go through all 365 days of the year and come up with 60 nights to tell you that they're available if you want to go for any one of those so that's the kind of functionality that you've got there so in itself it's a very handy tool that and of course you can also I think I mentioned tells you where the moon's setting if, if you want to prepare for any work then so we click off of that um, I suppose now is a good time to connect in the camera so I'm going to connect the camera Actually, I'm already connected there we go if it says disconnect so get in ahead of myself there let's go for live view and I'm sorry to say I'm not in an exciting, doing any exciting. I'm sitting in the kitchen. So which purpose? I'm just going to go and quickly focus on that camera lens a bit so we can see better. So excuse the state of the place. My apologies. Um, but focus on the tutorial. <laughs> now, this is a good area actually to discuss a few other if we've got. If we come down here, I'm, I'm skipping past my my convention of going clockwise or I'll come up to these features in a second but down here I think we need to adjust the exposure in the ISO we're shooting at 1 at 1600 I want to go down to 100 there we are which is slightly better but 30 seconds exposure is a bit high I'm going to go down to a second which makes it a bit easier to see kind of what's going on there now and uh, you can obviously change your exposure times if you're just taking an ad hoc shot bearing you know, believe it or not with this you plan ahead and get a um, schedule in place of what you might want to do i'll see if one eighth of a second works yeah, a bit dark but i'll tell you what i'm happy with that that's fine it shows the other um, feature in here that i wanted to show you because i'd lost my little rectangle here is while I've got you and I will come back down there in just a second I know I'm kind of I'm dilly dallying backwards and forwards if I click on zoom plus you can zoom in on different aspects of the image which might help you if you want to do some fine focusing uh, there's actually you know this only really works though clearly if, you, if you've got the lens attached to the DSLR camera if, if you're doing any shots directly like that otherwise this feature is not much use to handy for the moon I would say and if you're doing any solar work safety of course using a PST uh, no scrap that because you need the uh, because you'll be taking the lens off if, if you photograph in the moon, the, the moon directly this could be handy though so there you have that advantage now coming down again you've got the quality that you can choose you can go for the uh, um, the, the different uh, formats of picture you can take and of course depending on what you choose will depend on the compression and um, you can go for the raw which is going to be the maximum the raw and the large which uh, will give you a copy of each and that really will take up your space I tend to go for raw if I'm doing deep sky work so if I'm imaging um, I don't know M31, M33 or M27 the dumbbell nebula then you'd want to have the highest compression available so, so you, you want to have it at least compressed as possible um, falling over my words there but you, you want to have the raw image from that which, which is the point I'm making
Now, if you come across the words, a few other interesting features before we actually demonstrate taking photographs. You've got your image, which you can have on and on, which is your live pre, which is um, shows you the image quickly in that window as you take a picture, which is handy. And then, of course, you've got your image destination. Where would you like the picture to go to? So if it's on the PC, it'll go to that folder you've chosen earlier on. If you want it on the camera, it will obviously go to your SD card. You can obviously have a copy to your SD card and your PC. Keep in mind, though, please, that if you're, if you're shooting in RAW format, that's going to be quite a big file. So um, that's just going to keep on adding to the limit set on disk usage there. So keep you know, just, just something to keep in mind there if you're shooting um, in, in that sense. Um, other than that, there's not very much down here. To, um, you've got white balance. You're really, really going to need manual because that's the the, um, the mode you shoot in with the SLR anyway. And uh, anti-vibration pause is also in there. Uh, if we quickly, perhaps maybe just take a quick shot. Maybe you just heard the camera go there. And then a few seconds later that preview will appear there it is briefly shows up in the window there so you can sort of see how the image um, how the image looks and then you need to go back to live view afterwards otherwise the preview stays up there so as soon as the preview is up there that's what will happen each time you take a shot you'll get another image preview and another image preview um, you, you can have a choice between image preview or live view um, clearly if you're only interested in in the live view then you could turn that off and then you know you've got the live view there and you can always make sure you've got that by clicking on live view at the top so that's pretty much it for that side um, there is a bit more to go through um, for example this area here is for selecting plans I might have briefly discussed that earlier on but what you can do with this software is you can pre-decide I mean, I'm not going to put one together here because that's out beyond, beyond the scope of the review that we're doing but what you can do here is you can decide on a program for you know if you're going to be imaging say uh, M27 or the Dumbbell Nebula then you can put in here what ISO you're going to use for that what exposure you're going to use for that and how many subs so rather than playing around with the settings when you get out they can already have that already put in place put it on there click on it and start um, that's an overview I'm not going to go into any greater detail here better to demonstrate that but when you're actually out there and live so what else do we have very quickly if we go into telescope tab at the top clearly I don't have a telescope connected to at the moment but if, if I did have then I could control it from here and it's quite intuitive this in that you can control your uh, telescope your your, your focus can be can be controlled from here as well so can the filter wheel if you've got one of those it connects in via USB has uh, has that functionality so very good from that front so this is quite a very involved um, interactive user face that we've got here as well um, unfortunately I don't have either of these I'm not that fancy so, so I'm not going to be able to demonstrate that uh, in, in the immediate future but just to glaze over it so if you have it then, then, then by all means um, that's what it's all if we now go into tools um, again I'm going to come back to this but um, there's a few things you can see from here as well I'm going to quickly pop into APT settings at the top to demonstrate something in there if I may and we've changed the skin we're in grey at the moment but if you're outside you can go to red click on OK to that I'm not going to do it now but if you click OK to that come out of the application go back in then all this interface will be set to red for you nice for, for nice dark adaptation I'm recording in grey at the moment because it's easier to see and of course you can change your image destinations here and the location we saw earlier that's where that's hiding so if I cancel out of that that's where we are there not much else really to discuss from here except again you've you've got the option to change your image destination folder here on the PC um, you've also got options which we'll be looking at in in the other um, the next video use of the button off mask is very very handy again another video will show you that one this is just an overview and a collimation aid we'll be looking at along with a few other features but at the moment that's pretty much what I want to show you here for the overview of, of this um, application I mean obviously clearly if you want to you can disconnect now and then that's the camera safely disconnected out and um, you can pop away and look at your imaging images once you're finished so I'd like to leave you with that I think I've shown you all I can for now in terms of the overview and I'd like to thank you for watching and I'll see you shortly